I found this DaVinci 1.0a on eBay. It had a 0030 error and they were selling it for parts. Well, I fixed it. And I used a kit from Inventables. It's the solder sleeve kit and I'll show you how handy this was to getting this DaVinci 1.0a back running again. This video is sponsored by Inventables. The 0030 error that was on this machine is actually pretty common. It's an error code for the x-axis. The extruder can't move properly in the x-direction. Well, in this particular case, it was hesitating when it started up. It would move, but it would sit there and grind for a second and then move. And what it did is prevent the extruder from going to the home position. And that will give the error. So let me show you what the key was to finding out what was wrong with it. It starts over here at the x-axis. The x-axis mechanism is a motor, a stepper motor that's right here. A stepper motor like this guy. And there's a connector and a harness that goes through this wound plastic cabling back to the board that controls the whole printer. This is the motherboard. Well, there's two connectors. There's one here for the x-axis and one here for the y-axis. So the y-axis was working fine. The x-axis was bad. So what I did is I first took this panel off and then swapped these two connectors. So by swapping these two wires, I now can determine whether it was in the board or in the motor. Because if I swap the two, the problem should shift to the y-axis motor if it's in the board because now the y-axis harness is where the x-axis was. So if it's the driver here, it'll cause the y-axis to be bad. And that's not what happened. It actually followed the x motor. So it told me it's not in the board, which was good news, because this is a real expensive part. So now that I know the board is good, I went back and I put the motor on its proper connector here on the motherboard. And then what I did is I actually removed the x-axis motor just like this and I opened it up and connected it to where the y-axis was so now I really just I kept the y drive and the y harness but moved the motor and it worked the motor ran fine no hesitation nothing so that told me the motor was good so it came down to the only thing left was something in the harness. So next what I did is I disconnected the, the motor. So I had the connector here and then I disconnected the harness from the board down here. And then I did a continuity check between the two. So then I got out my multimeter. Some call it a multimeter. I call it a multimeter and I put it on the ohm setting and then I put it on the sound setting and all that is is an audible check for continuity so when the two wires touch you get a nice beep so then I stuck a wire in each connector here I got it stuck into the yellow wire so I put one wire there and then there's another wire over here on the connector for the motor and when I touch this, it proves I've got continuity through the yellow wire. So I did that for each wire, and there's four of them. There's a yellow, a red, a blue, and an orange. And what happened was, is I found out the blue wire did not beep. So it did not have continuity. It had to be broken somewhere. And that's what I found. The blue wire, up here near the motor, the insulation was very, very flexible. And so what I did is I cut it open and found out that the wire was actually broken inside. And that's from its flexing back and forth. So I think this is a common problem because I've had several people ask me about it on their Da Vinci's. So when you've got to fix a broken wire like this, especially one that's going to flex, you want to solder it. You want it to be a very good connection. So you got to whip out the soldering iron solder it together you also get to get some shrink tubing and get the heat gun out and wrap it in that and shrink tube it so it's 
it's really protected and it's strong. Well, that's where these inventable solder sleeves come in handy because they take care of all of that in one part. You see, what they are is they're actually shrink tubing with a center ring of solder. So you can put the wire in both ends, heat it up with the heat gun, and it'll melt the solder and make the connection. And because they're clear, you can see the connection. And then it shrinks down around the wire. So it's very, very handy. It's a one-step fix. And they've got it for different sizes. They got it for 10 to 12 gauge. They've got it from 14 to 16 gauge, 18 to 22 gauge, and even down to 24 to 26 gauge, which fits this setup here. So that's basically what I did. And the nice thing too is they're clear, so you don't have to get a uh, shrink tubing to match the color you're trying to repair. The color of the wire comes through the clear. So it matches, you can still see the color of the wire. So I'm not going to show you how I did it on here because this is already repaired. And to film in here would be very, very tough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these and repair the wires from a harness from a motor to just show you how it works. And that way I can zoom in, you can see how handy these things are to work with. Okay, so I've got the motor harness. Here's the connector, and then the wire coming from the connector, and I've stripped the end of it, so I've got bare wire. And then this wire represents the harness, and I've stripped the end of that as well. So now I take the solder sleeve, and I slide it over the wire, just like you would shrink tubing, only I put it till the wire is, the bare wire is right at that ring of solder. Then I'll bring the other one in and put it in the same location. So the two wires are touching and are both inside that ring of solder. Now I'll clamp them here to hold it, but you can easily just put this in place and the wire will probably stay pretty tight because these sleeves, you know, they fit pretty good. And I'm just going to blow the heat gun on this guy. It takes a few minutes, and I've got this on the, the mild heat, just to get it warmed up. And you can see the shrink tubing shrinking down on it. Now I'm going to turn it up a little higher and get that solder to just melt in there. And the solder is melting and connecting the two wires, and the shrink tubing is shrinking down around it. And then I'm good. Now you want to let it cool because unlike regular shrink tubing, you have to get this hotter because of the solder. So this is still going to be pretty soft. So you want to let it cool off. So the solder hardens and then the shrink tubing hardens and around the wire so it doesn't slip. And then once it's done, you can still still see the gray coming through. So you already know it's a gray connection, but you can see the solder has made a very, very connection be between the two wires. Now it's probably cooled off enough, so I'll take this out. And there we have it. A fixed solder joint without having to get out my soldering iron or cutting a separate piece of shrink tubing. It's strong, ready to go, and flexible. So there you have it. That's how you fix a 0030 error on a DaVinci 1.0a. Check those wires. If you've got this problem, you've probably got a broken wire. And if you want one of these kits, check out Inventable's solder sleeve kit. You can buy just the individual solder sleeves. If you don't want the whole kit, they were nice enough to give me this kit to try out, and I love it. It's going to be so handy in my lab. So that's it. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. That way I know you're watching. I've got some other things planned for this because now I can print with PLA, which I couldn't do with my 1.0s because I've got the better extruder. And I think I'm going to try some other plastics. We'll see how that goes. See you next time.